Welcome to Finance in 5. A number of people have asked me to do a video about Michael Burry's Japanese investments. We are aware of the company's concerns, and it's certainly an interesting topic. I mean, I could take you step by step to what exactly is occurring. You know, all you have to do is ask. I'm, I'm available. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Japan is a special case for a number of reasons. It's highly technologically advanced. It has a high population density with respect to other developed nations, such as the UK, US, Canada, Germany, and Spain. And in spite of this and its large and growing elderly population, the total number of illness fatalities has remained tightly controlled and sits below a thousand. The fact that Japan is on the road to recovery is good news for investors. But even before the pandemic, Burry had singled out a number of Japanese companies for investment. And we're going to look at those companies and examine their prospects for the future. Coming up today on Finance in 5. Plans are afoot to unlock the economy fully by August in Japan, with Disney's Tokyo theme park set to open its gates in July. President Shinzo Abe declared that the Japanese people will have to live alongside their illness and accept a new normal. But putting to one side the short to medium term effects of the illness on business performance, it's worth reminding ourselves that stocks can bounce back up quickly as demand and confidence improve, with a reopened economy setting the stage for such growth. Japanese companies, including Honda and Toyota, have long had a reputation for constant improvement, or as the Japanese call it, Kaizen, which has been described as a system designed to provide the tools for people to continually improve their work. Let's examine some of the companies favoured by Burry. Number 1. Sansai Technologies. They provide products and services in the entertainment space by developing rides for amusement parks such as mini roller coasters, family rides, flume rides, and configuring stage equipment for theatre, events, and studios. Products such as acoustic panels are used to optimise the sound enjoyed by audiences listening to orchestras and theatres. They also manufacture staging and scenery equipment, including moving stage platforms and elevators. The company trades just above 0.5 times book value and a price earnings ratio of 7 times. Sansai has developed roller coasters around the world. Here is a list of the rides that they have designed and installed in various well known parks. As well as installation of each ride, Sansai also earns revenue from ongoing maintenance, which continues regardless of the pandemic. So this seems like a savvy bet from Bowie as the rides will surely need to undergo maintenance and to pass safety checks before parks can receive a green light to reopen. Another cool thing is that they have developed this real-life transformer robot. It's a 4 meter high beast of a machine which can be controlled by two people standing inside it, and it changes seamlessly into a car. Despite the fact that this sector has taken a short-term hit due to no theatre or amusement park attendance during the lockdown, Sansai is still profitable and has recovered 50% of its losses since the March collapse, currently trading at 712 yen per share, although at the end of 2018, it was trading at almost 1,900 yen per share, so there has been some retrenchment from that peak. With Burry being a long-term value investor, it's likely that he will hang on to this stock for a while yet, although don't hold me to that. Since receiving comments from people who claim that I'm advising the public to buy stocks like tailored brands just because they're held by Burry, I should point out that this is not the case. I offer a point of view, that's all, everyone has one, but I'm not a financial advisor and cannot be held responsible for the private investment decisions of individuals. That aside, let's examine the dividend of the company. Sansai Technologies pays a dividend every six months and right now that dividend is 15 cents per share, which is about 1.8%, which is the same as inflation, meaning that any money that you place into investing into this company won't lose its purchasing power in the first year. But the only way that you can make a profit is if the stock appreciates in value as well as returning a good dividend back to you. The question just becomes whether or not the company's share price will rise significantly. I don't know if it will, but its profits are higher in 2019. Its gross profits stand at 26.8% at $112.35 million. It has $99 million in cash reserves, and its dividend payout ratio is improving consistently year after year. Burry would like to see it pay down debt and do acquisitions. Management teams seem to like that a lot. The second company is Nippon Pillar Packaging. It was started in 1924 and it makes mechanical seals, gaskets and packaging materials for various machines. It makes all sorts of products in all sorts of categories as we can see here. Products used in oil refining, marine service, cars, semiconductors. The stock performance shown on the investor relation page here 
reveals that it trades at 1,375 yen per share and has been on an upward trend for the past few years. The president and CEO thanks the R&D team for developing innovative products. Analyst Ben Hobson thinks the stock will continue to perform well and as a result of it being a high quality company. Burry believes the company will start growing as an oversaturated market is purged of tech components. The company trades at 8.4 times earnings and 0.61 times book value. Interestingly, the company decided to name itself Nippon Pillar Packaging because the first product created by this company was shaped like a pillar. It really is a timeless anecdote. Lucky their first product wasn't shaped like a pair of buttocks, that's all I can say. They are selling a lot of products overseas and returning money to shareholders by repurchasing shares. The company says in its earnings report that its target payout ratio has been set at 30% or more, so this is a high dividend paying stock, and that money is after they have paid for their research and development and business expansion. The company has bought back 300,000 shares at a cost of 337 million yen, which is just over $3.1 million. The company's factory has been redeveloped. When you look this up on Google Maps, you will see that what appears to be a construction site. But according to Nippon Pillow, work was completed in March 2020. Due to the effect that coronavirus has had on the economy, Nippon Pillow has chosen to push back its sales and operating income targets from 2019 back to 2023 as part of what they call their medium-term management plan. The twin pillars of that strategy are to invest in plant and equipment to increase corporate competitiveness and to optimize shareholder returns by increasing the dividend payout ratio to 30%. There has been a year-on-year -year decrease in sales which Nippon attributes to a slump in demand in the petrochemical markets. They are also expecting reduced demand for the parts that they supply to automobiles, with fewer cars being made not only because of coronavirus reducing disposable incomes, but also the introduction of a consumption tax would put off many potential purchases as the push towards zero emission targets in vehicles continues. They are expecting there to be lots of construction work taking place in the Tokyo metropolitan area ahead of the Olympics, which should lead to improved sales, although it isn't clear which exact products Nippon provides here. But it could be all sorts of pipe work and machinery, and the company is optimistic looking ahead. Tosei Corporation. Tosei is a real estate management and real estate developer. It trades at 7.5 times earnings and 1.1 times book value. This is a company that has a number of separate revenue streams. Burry likes Tosei for a lot of reasons. Chief among them, they have recently repurchased their shares to raise the level of shareholder returns and to improve capital efficiency. Tosei develop office and commercial real estate. Their website reveals that they have six businesses, including hotel, rental, development, revitalization. A glance at their recent financial statements is revealing as it shows us that the company has improved its profits between 2019 and 2020. They now pay a dividend of 47 yen per share, up from 30 yen per share in 2019. Shares in Tosai currently trade at 1141 yen, which is just over $10. They have benefited from high property prices in Tokyo, which has improved their profit margins since they have been selling those properties. They have also had access to cheap, low interest financing. This makes sense, as the Central Bank of Japan has set interest rates at below zero. Revenue and profit have increased sharply, driven by the growth of the revitalization arm of Tosei's business. With the virus outbreak largely contained, I wouldn't expect Japan's real estate market to suffer excessive fallout. To be able to afford to live in Tokyo probably requires a job with a decent income, high net worth clients. Those on long-term tenancies will be unlikely to default on their monthly rent, according to these figures. Annual dividend is 4%, which isn't huge, but this company has decent free cash flow and maintains the dividend over time to its shareholders. Number four, Kanemoto Company. Kanemoto is in the construction equipment rental business. It also sells steels, presumably for construction as well as information products rental, which perhaps includes computers. They also offer what they call welfare devices, which from the accompanying graphic, I can only assume are wheelchairs, not iPads. They offer thousands of pieces of construction equipment for hire. This is probably valuable for a lot of construction companies who favor the capital efficiency that leasing equipment offers them over purchasing it outright. We can look here at the six months consolidated financial report. One thing that jumps out at me is that the CEO is Tetsuo Kanemoto, which tells me that the company is named after him. One and two dollars. It's an interesting dividend payout structure. You appear to get five thirteenths of your dividend at the end of the second quarter and the remaining eight thirteenths of your dividend at the end of the fourth quarter. The net income per share here is 256.26 yen, which is $2.4. 2,299 yen is $21.52. Gives us an annual dividend yield of 11.5%, which is not bad at all. 
It trades at 8.2 times earnings and 0.8 times book value. Burry likes the credit management and maintenance operations that keep its equipment in pristine condition. Burry also likes that it deploys capital through buying equipment and whole companies, therefore its debt levels are reasonably low. Number five, Altec Corporation. On Altec's website, it says that the company is engaged in the import and sale of printing and packaging machinery. According to Burry, it provides four higher mechanics and engineers too. If you read this sheet, you can see the array of complex equipment that they supply to various different sectors. 3D printing and scanning also enables Altec to produce prototypes via laser sintering to meet a wide range of industrial needs. By the looks of this website, Burry's information appears up to date. The company trades at 11 times earnings and 2.7 times book value. It has recovered from its March 13th, 2020 low of 148 yen per share to peak at 247 yen on June the 8th. Today it trades at 230 yen per share, which is $2.15 per share at today's exchange rate. Number six, Tasmo Company. Tasmo makes and services LCD color filter coaters of semiconductors, which they manufacture from heat resistant polyimide materials. Its products relate to the microchip industry. Tasmo USA's office is located in Fremont, California. It trades around 1.1 times book value and at 7.5 times earnings. Their share price has almost doubled since the March 19th low of 866 yen per share. The price is now a cool 1,646 yen per share, so it's up 90% in three months. Burry could have made a fortune here. Finally, number seven, Yote Refractories Limited. Yote utilizes ceramic technology to provide a number of different products, including those which involve or require high temperature treatment processes. Yote targets different markets that are fire resistant. It supplies a diverse array of businesses, including those involved with the manufacture of glass, steel, cement, and electrical components for devices. It has yielded at least 100 yen per share over the past few years. It trades at 0.4 times book value and 3.3 times earnings, according to Guru Focus data. According to Burry, it has a third of its market cap in cash. So those are the shares that Burry has favored. He hasn't spoke me to me since he hired me. Just to give you an overview of what he's chosen and some information about how those companies have performed. Thanks for listening. And if you enjoy this content, be sure to like and subscribe and I can provide more videos. Let me know if there are any specific topics that you'd like us to cover. All the very best.